Next question is from B Bounce. Is high cholesterol still the demon we once thought it was, such as having high LDL but also having high HDL? No, it was it was overstated for a long time. So here's the deal with cholesterol. Obviously, if it gets super high, you can have some problems. But if it's kind of high and all your other markers of health look good, it's probably not a, a big deal. It's one metric that you measure. Now, here's what studies show with slightly high cholesterol. You build more muscle and you're stronger. And it seems to have a protective effect in older individuals. In fact, people who live the longest tend to have relatively high cholesterol. So it's a very interesting thing. that It's funny that we targeted it as a demon for so long, probably because we had some pretty effective pharmaceuticals at lowering cholesterol. So whenever we have a drug that does a good job of changing a number, we put a lot of focus on on that number and cholesterol with statins, that was that well. Was explain the explain the difference of the the fluffy particles versus the other. One. I always get this backwards or messed up whenever I try and explain this. What, yes. What, so, is, what is the difference in that? Because so, there's like there's there's like bad HDL and there's good HDL, right? Yeah. So so you have your good cholesterol and your bad cholesterol, right? The good cholesterol has got a protective effect. The bad cholesterol has got more of a damaging effect. But that's a, it's an overgeneralization. If you look deeper. Um, the really dense uh, particles of cholesterol, the ones that tend to cause damage, the real fluffy ones, uh, tend to not. So, and here's the thing with cholesterol too: it, it's oftentimes we see it real high, or we see, for example, when you're looking at arteries and you're seeing the cholesterol mm. and stuff patched up on the sides of the arteries, they blame the cholesterol. But really, it's 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 a side effect. Uh, there are doctors and scientists that believe that the cholesterol is being used as a way to protect uh, or patch up inflamed Isn't areas. There, I mean, genetic uh, components. Huge. That is, right? The majority of that, right? If, when it's problematic versus dietary cholesterol. Dude, cholesterol is so important for our health that our body makes it. And yeah. your liver and your body uh, dictate. I mean, you could increase your cholesterol intake and uh, that you're eating, and your body will just make less of it. And you can eat less, and your body will make more and kind of keep you at this homeostasis. So based off that theory, you could go to the doctor and the doctor could technically tell you have really high cholesterol and you actually be in a very healthy place. Is that possible? Depends how high. And you know, if we're talking like your numbers are like 300, 400, uh, you probably have some problems. If you're, cause they say anything over 200 is bad, right? But let's say you're at 220 and your ratio of HDL to LDL is really good and your blood pressure is good. Your triglycerides are good. Everything else looks good. Inflammatory markers look good. You're probably you're well, probably and what okay. if most all the HDL is the fluffy particles and and not the really dense ones? Very, it's good luck getting that test. I know that that was my next question. Yeah. Okay, say I come back, I go, and the, and I'm two twenty, right? Yeah. So I'm on on the higher end, and the doctor says that to me. Do I have the ability to ask him like, hey, are those are those more fluffy or are those yeah, more? Can dense? I get a more detailed look? Yeah, unlikely. You'd have to go to a special. I mean, they're they're not. It's not mainstream. Yet. And most Just likely, this. he's going to try and put me on a statin right away, right? He that is was, because a statin is so easy. If you take a statin, your cholesterol goes down. Mm -hmm. Done. It's a guarantee, right? It just works. By the way, there's a there's a natural statin. If you're somebody who's dealing with highish cholesterol and it's kind of borderline, and you're a little concerned, and your doctor's a little concerned. You can try red yeast rice extract, which you could buy uh, over the counter, um, and it's a natural statin, much milder than the pharmaceutical ones, and it will lower your cholesterol. Now, I thought actually dietary cholesterol has very little to do with your HDL and LDL levels. Correct. Correct. In fact, the, the, they're changing their stance. They're now saying that cholesterol is no longer a nutrient of concern. Uh, typically, poor cholesterol numbers are coming from uh, an inflammatory response. Diet is high in calories, high in sugar, you're not active, and then genetics. Uh, Justin hit the nail on the head. There are people who just have, you know, high, there's a condition, hypercholestemia or something, I can't, I'm not pronouncing it right, but mm -hmm. uh, something like that, where people make tremendous amounts of cholesterol and then they're very prone to uh, issues with their heart. In those cases, statins can definitely be a, a lifesaver. So now are most, are, are most doctors up to speed on this to where, or are we still have doctors that go, oh, stay away from the butter and bacon? I don't know. I wouldn't, yeah. And eggs, you know, cut those about, out. Think about the, the pharmaceutical industry in general. How much power Yeah, how much power and influence. They, like, so I just, I don't think new information like that is really being pushed as hard. No, look, okay, look at it this way. Uh, statins have been around now for a little while. And they very effectively lower cholesterol. And when they first came out, there was a prediction that this would just revolutionize medicine and the heart attack and heart disease rate would go through the floor. Now, here's what happened. If you look at the statistics, the survival rates from heart attacks and heart disease increased dramatically. Not from statins. It was from advances in the procedures, like putting stints in your arteries and stuff like that. The heart disease rates are still high as hell. 
Statins have barely made a dent or no dent whatsoever. Now, I know there's studies that show that statins might have some benefit. There's others that show there's no benefit. There's studies that show that statins reduce cognitive function, increase right. the risk of dementia. So uh, I would say cholesterol, it maybe it's one piece of a big picture. Right. Don't just rely on that one piece because it doesn't tell you a whole lot by itself. Have they found, like, have they attributed it more towards, like, calcium deposits and, like, hardening type minerals that have contributed more it's, towards, like, heart Yeah, that's part issues. of it. That's part of it. And I'm not super versed, but I, yeah. but fr from what I understand, it's just not the, the big deal that yeah. we thought it was. And I was always if, curious well, about this just because my, my grandpa died of what they diagnosed as, like, high cholesterol but like to me it was like it was suspect because of that like i i want to know more information about like you know what they're doing now to really like uh, diagnose and assess uh, a lot of these conditions well when we first started the podcast didn't uh the heart, american heart association had to come out and recant their stance on all this on cholesterol yes yeah. on cholesterol dietary cholesterol yeah that yeah. was just like five six years ago it was yeah. right when we started the podcast i remember that was big news they though. used to say you know be careful how much cholesterol you consume now they're saying uh, the cholesterol is not a nutrient of concern they're still you got issues they still have issues with saturated fat and stuff like that which we can make arguments for as well but cholesterol now i think it's pretty mainstream accepted that it's not something that you need to be careful for that you consume now here's a deal old school bodybuilders knew and this is a legit thing you try this out yourself they knew when they consumed a lot of cholesterol and remember these are healthy fit people these were old school bodybuilders so they weren't on all types of of gear and all that stuff they knew that when they increased their dietary cholesterol intake, they would get a boost in strength and recovery. Uh, there's studies that support this. They've done studies where they'll take groups of people. They do this with older people, I think in their 50s, and they broke them up into groups, and this group ate 200 milligrams of cholesterol a day, and then it was 400 and 800 or something like that, which is a lot, right? And the people who, the more cholesterol they consumed, the stronger that they were and the more muscle that they built. I experiment with this all the time. All you guys know me. You guys have seen some of my breakfast where I'm eating eight to 10 egg yeah. yolks just for the cholesterol. When I do that, I'm stronger. I'm stronger in the gym every single time. So this is something you can play with. But yeah, as a number, it's one small piece of a bigger picture by itself. It doesn't, unless it's really, really high, it doesn't really mean much.